Right then, Cannondale SISL2 crank set review. Um, I've had these cranks for about four years now. Well, coming up to four years. Um, I bought them in February 2013. Um, I've ridden them loads, basically every day um, since then. Um, so we're looking at about 80,000 kilometers around. I've ridden all sorts of terrain with these. I've gone really hard on them. So this review will look at how they're made, all the components that go into the crank set, um, and looking at how they how they ride, the good points, the bad points, things that have gone wrong, all the good stuff that hasn't gone wrong, um, and maybe some tips on how to install them and all that kind of stuff. So it should be pretty interesting. So let's just explain how they work then. Um, these cranks are Cannondale's top of the line race cranks for road. Um, I believe they're also used on mountain bike as well. So there's two separate arms, um, a separate axle. Then there's the sort of compression system thing, which sits on the non-drive side, which I'll explain later. The cranks are screwed down here on each side. You've got the arm here. The axle goes through. The arm sits on the axle with a spline, which I'll show you later. Um, then this just screws onto the end and compresses the system together. The chain ring system is uh, attached with a lock ring on the back and uh, it has a proprietary spline shape which slots onto the uh, onto the drive side crank arm. Now the non-drive side doesn't have that of course. That's one of the axles. Um, as you can see yeah it's a, it's a sort of splined end there slightly angled in. Um, that sits through like that. So obviously the crank arm sits onto this. Um, yeah, it's the same on both sides. The drive side is a slightly different uh, depth here because the bearing system is a bit different. Yeah, very light. Um, I believe the whole thing's made of aluminium of different grades. Um, yeah, so let's get into a bit more detail then about each part. Okay, going into a bit more detail then. This is the drive side crank arm. Um, the drive side and the non-drive side are basically made in the same way. Um, it consists of a front side and a rear side, which are which are, are, are bonded together with this seam here. And then this seam has a sort of uh, spline at the top, which holds the shape together, I believe. This surface here is very, very thin. You can hear that. All right. It's anodized black. Um, now, the first sort of negative thing, really, I think, the anodizing is really delicate. So you scratch these things just by riding them around. You can, you know, wear off a little bit of the anodizing here just by pedaling around and your foot brushing against it. Anything like your chain falling onto this will just take the anodizing off straight away. It's really not, it's not an excellent um, finish on this. Uh, it looks good, but it, it's really, really delicate. I think it's too delicate, really. So for example here where my chain has come off the side because this praxis thing is shit, um, it's scratched up the, uh, the, the surface of the crank arm very, very easily and very quickly. I was a bit annoyed about that. Um, so that's not a good thing. Um, in terms of machining, this thing's really, they've really shaved as much off as they can. This entire crank set is ridiculously light. Um, so the cranks, the axle, bearings and the original spider ring. I don't use that now because I've got this power meter, but the spider ring, which is Cannondale's um, own spider and chain ring system together. I think the whole thing, including the bottom bracket and everything comes to about 500 grams, which is, it's really, really light. Um, let's have a look at the non-drive side then to understand how the compression system works. Okay, this is the non-drive side then. Um, you can see the crank I'm a bit better here, I think. The back of it is is kind of shaped in a sort of wave. I think that's just to remove a bit of weight. Um, you can see the seam a bit better there and the uh, sort of jigsaw interface part they've made. Um, in terms of how it compresses together, the axle sits through the bottom bracket area, of course, um, with this spline bit sticking out the end and then the, the crank arm sits onto that. In here, it's quite interesting, um, the first thing that goes on is called a wave washer, which is basically a washer with a, a waved surface on it, which is essentially a spring. Um, then you've got a number of washers which you can put on. The number of washers required depends on the uh, width of your bottom bracket. So, you know, manufacturing sort of cock-ups can be taken into account. 
Um, then lastly, you've got this so this hat washer thing, they call it, which sits on the end and then you, you put the crank on. This system works really well if you get the right number of washers on. Um, but finding out how many washers you need is just trial and error. Um, I originally set this up with, with one too few washers, so I didn't have enough washers on by one. Um, this meant that even though it felt you know completely compressed and, and okay when I spun the crank around when I installed it, um, in use over time, it meant that there was a little tiny bit of play in the system which buggered up this axle. Now, if you can look at this axle here, this is this is where the bearings sit, all right? So that bearing there is the non-drive side, sorry. That's the, uh, that's the non-drive side bearing side. This is the drive side. Now, there was a little tiny bit of, of play, like we're talking, you know, micro millimeters or whatever, but that caused this to start creaking and then this wore down a bit because of the play, which meant that I had to get a new axle. Now, luckily, these axles are actually quite cheap and Cannondale just sell them almost as a sort of, you know, replacement commodity item, which says to me that they've sort of designed this as the softest bit. Um, you know, that's cool. Um, but I wish that Cannondale would say that in their, their literature. Um, so once you get the right amount of washers in there, now that I've got it right, I haven't touched this for... God, it must be over over a year and a half. I've had no creaking, I've had no weird clicking, nothing at all, right? I do install everything with um, Wacos brake assembly paste, which is a sort of highly sticky um, automotive brake assembly uh, paste, which is probably fairly unconventional for use in cycling, but that's the best thing to use, I think. Um, but yeah, once, once I installed it with the right amount of washers, it's been absolutely perfect. In use then, these cranks are excellent they're i think very stiff they've been proven to be stiff as well with some some, some sort of group testing i think uh, fairwheel bikes did one um, with these they're really really nice to to ride i'm like now obviously i don't really know that i'm riding them because i just get my bike and go and i've had them on for you know three years now but yeah excellent um i have ridden in my life many 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 different types of cranks and i've broken loads of different types of cranks um including and i was having a little think about this earlier we're talking you know right back to the mid 90s so that's like olivio mountain bike cranks um specialized mountain bike cranks on the s works frame I've, I've broken xt forearm cranks the original ones of those those bent bmx i've had profile um primo i've had loads of one piece cranks i've had all the all of the iterations of the uh g sport odyssey uh, one bolt, two bolt, thunderbolt cranks. I've had Dura A seven nine hundred cranks. I've had one hundred five cranks. These are the last ones I've bought, and I've had these cranks the longest out of all the cranks I've had in my life. They've been going okay, but I have had some problems with these, um, which Cannondale have rectified. Um, the first major problem I had with them was I I broke this crank arm. I cracked it, and it cracked here at the end. Looking at the crank here, um, this is a this is a new one. This is a replacement one that Ca uh, Cannondale gave me. My original one, um, I was riding my bike along, and I thought that something was wrong with my pedal. My um, it felt like something was my cleat was slipping out or something like that. And I'd look at my shoe and I'd look at the pedal, and nothing nothing was wrong with it. And then I was cleaning my bike after a ride, after I've been doing some pretty hard climbing, and there was a big crack across here. Um, so what, what happened is this had just split apart the weld down here and broken or whatever, however they've made it. And the inner plate and the outer plate have just sort of started twisting around, which means that the pedal was going up and down. I took it down to the bike shop and they just, you know, couldn't believe that it had broken. Like every bike shop says whenever you break something, even though they've definitely seen things break before. Um, that's part of the course, isn't it, with bikes? Um, they pretended to be surprised. Um, called up Cannondale. Cannondale gave me a new one. That was all good. Uh, the, the Cannondale dealer in Japan, though, is a dickhead. And he tried to fob me off with a, a second-hand one that was all rubbed and, and old down here. I said, look, mate, give me a new one, an actual new one. And he sort of went, oh, OK. I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but that wasn't Cannondale. That was the Cannondale dealer in Japan. So, you know, whatever. So if you're watching this Cannondale dealer in Japan, man, you're a knob. Anyway, they replaced that, and that's been totally fine since. Um, Nothing else has gone wrong with it, um, like I say, apart from the axle um, wearing out. Uh, but that was my error, my installation error. However, like I say, I would like Cannondale to make it a bit clearer about how to install these things. Um, so yeah, Cannondale SOSL2 cranks, really good, extremely light. 
Um, the issues I've had with them have been fixed, um, and one of the issues was my fault. Um, good stuff as well, um, because they're like a three-piece crank and, and they're not attached to a chain ring, uh, you can use any chain rings you like with them. So Cannondale do supply their own uh, their own SISL2 uh, spider ring, which the spider is part of the chain ring and then it comes out there. If you want to use a power meter that's built into the uh, the crank, that the, built into the chain ring, like a, you can get a um, a quark one, I believe, and you, you can get a Power 2 Max one, which is one I use. Stages used to do uh, a left arm Stages one, but apparently they had a problem getting it getting it to bond to the uh, the anodizing on the uh, on the crank arm, so they've stopped doing that now. And they only ever did it for the SISL one, not the SISL two. Um, so if you want to get a power meter that's built into the crank system somewhere, you've got to go Quark or you've got to go uh, Power Two Max. You've seen my review of the Power Two Max. I think that's the best way to go. Um, but it does mean you've got to use these shitty chain rings, whatever. Um, oh yeah, they're, they're really expensive. These they're really expensive. They're like up there with the, the you know the most expensive cranks you can get. But in terms of their weight, how stiff they are, how modular they are as well. Like so, if you do break a bit of it, like you can get a new axle, you can get a new bearing, you can get a new hat wash, you can get a new crank arm on one side or whatever. You know they are really up there. I think I would probably use these on a, a frame that wasn't even a Cannondale frame. I know that's probably sacrilege, isn't it? But I, I think I would do that because these are light and, and excellent. And overall, apart from the one bit where that did, uh, where this crank up here did crack, I've had no problems with them. So yeah, really, really good. And when you get them, they come in this sort of massive pizza box looking thing, which is quite cool as well. So yeah, Cannondale SISL2 cranks, very good.